welcome back to the channel. It's the middle of September. I don't know about you, but I thought that September meant that the gardening would slow down a little bit. And I actually forgot just how much work there is to do in gardens in September. The grass that slowed down when it was really, really hot has just suddenly started coming back to life and needs a lot more strimming. The deadheading is ongoing and obviously there's masses to harvest and masses to clear away as well. So September, it's the busy month, isn't it? First job of the day though is to get this strimming finished. The grass has really grown after all the rain last week and then the sun that we're having now. And then I'll head up to the main plot where we can discuss the things that need to get done on the garden now to prepare for autumn and to help with that sort of last ripening of those summer harvest crops. Safety first though, get those glasses back on. I've run out of strimmer wire. Now for years, I thought that that was a job that only men could do. It seemed like rocket science to me. Not that women don't do rocket science, but you know what I mean. Anyway, it was a blue job. But I thought, there's this thing called YouTube. Funny that. I'll watch a video on how to put this strimmer wire on this steel strimmer. Honestly, it's so much easier than I thought. So in case you have to wait for someone to put your strimmer wire on for you, I'll show you how to do it. Honestly, it's going to blow your mind how simple it is. First job, you see this line on the top here. This has to line up, there's arrows on the side of it, with the holes where the wire feeds through on the side. So that's my first job. There you go. It's lined up with it. There's two arrows on the frame of it as well to show you. And then you simply push the cable through. See, I've pushed it through one side. Keep pushing it till it comes out the other side. Pull it through, get them an equal distance. And then it even gives you arrows on the head to tell you which way to turn it to tighten it. And it's a simple job of twist and tighten. And you keep going until it's the length that you need. There you go. And that really is it. It's as simple as that. And obviously we all know that they self feed by you tapping them on the ground. So as you tap that, it releases a bit more. Hopefully I might've just helped you never have to wait for someone to do that for you again. And if you already knew how to do that, then I've just shared a useless piece of information, but might've helped somebody. Now, one of the main jobs I seem to be doing at the moment is the deadheading. I feel like I'm in a bit of a desperate battle to eke out these sweet peas for as long as I can. So as soon as they look like they're dying back, I've been chopping them off. And so far, so good. Yes, they're nowhere near as prolific as they were earlier in the season, but I'm still getting a few blooms on them. But I do realise that within the next few weeks, these will be completely over and I'm going to really miss them. I've really, really enjoyed having them. I'm not saving any pods off of these ones. I bought quite a few new varieties at the RHS Tatton show, but I am actually saving a few of the pods from some that are on the main garden. And I know that they're the only variety, so I'm just going to make sure to save those. So I have loads of new sweet peas for next year. And I have some that I never got around to sowing for this year anyway, because I felt like I had enough, but I think I might have more sweet peas next year. Love them, absolutely love them. Now talking about saving pods for seeds, this is my pongo bean plant. And you may have remember that in an earlier video, I said that I wanted to save some of these beans for seed for next year. And I nearly made a massive mistake because I've been merrily harvesting them and enjoying them. And they haven't set any more flowers and I hadn't noticed that there was no more flowers probably because we've had quite a few cold nights. I'm assuming that's probably stopped them from setting any more flowers. But I bought some of these organza bags. There are six bean pods left on here and I have started to cover them just to make sure that nothing eats them before they can dry and properly ripen. So I've put them on these ones. You can see that here and I need to go ahead and cover this last one here. And it's just simple shove them in and pull the draw cords tight and that's it protected 
Now, arguably, one of the biggest jobs I need to get done for this week is to make sure we get as many tomatoes ripened as possible. Now, you saw me a couple of weeks ago taking as many of the stems off as I could to sort of help with that process. But there's one more thing that really needed to be done and I keep putting it off, but today's the day. So come on, let's get in the polytunnel and let's see what we need to do in there. I think you can probably guess what it is that needs to be done. <laughs> Earlier in the season, I was really struggling with the heat in the polytunnel and how bright it was. And I had a lot of leaf curl on the tomatoes. So I put up this shade netting and it was great. It's been great all season. But obviously as we're coming to the end of the season, I don't really care if the leaves get leaf curl anymore. What I need are my tomatoes to ripen. So I need to take this netting down. There's a lot of dead flies above there. So I'm gonna put a cap on my head. I'm gonna try and sort of pull my shirt collar around my neck a bit so they don't go down my top but just got to get it done haven't I? Duncan has conveniently disappeared because he's not fancying this job either so it's just you and me right let's crack on now just in case things go terribly wrong when I do this I am going to harvest as many ripe or near ripe tomatoes as I can and I mean, that's twofold anyway, as long as they're almost ripe, they're just getting picked now so that the plants can put their energy into ripening what are remaining on there because these will ripen very quickly in the house now. This cherry brandy wine variety is Duncan's favorite. I'm sure I've mentioned that before, but it does have a tendency to split rather annoyingly. This is a rose crush. This is my first one of these that's ripened. Look at that, that's a beauty, isn't it? This one here is another blight resistant variety. This is Crimson Crush. They are really quite orange compared to some of the other varieties. This one here is good old moneymaker and it's supposed to be one of the most reliable croppers, but as you can see, even the bottom truss hasn't actually ripened properly yet. It's gonna be a lot of tomatoes on here if we can just get it to ripen. Small tomatoes on this little Roma plant. She'll take them off as well. Now this is the Black Beauty and look at how that one's split. Probably won't be eating that one. Really struggled with these black tomatoes at knowing whether they were actually ripe enough to pick or not. I mean, it looks obvious when you turn it over that it's red, but sometimes they still haven't looked ripe from the top. But I do think that this one actually could be about right. Look, it's just turning. They feel soft. Lovely colour, just so subtle. This is Queen of the Night, again. Here's a quite a nice shape. Pretty, isn't she? And obviously while I'm in here, even though these were all pruned last week, you can see ones that are trying to put up more leaders. You've got to admire their will to keep on wanting to grow. Just a couple of these honeycombs. We didn't get many on here because this was one of the plants that really struggled with the leaf curl so it's kind of set not many fruit this year but hopefully we will get everything off of this last trust. Duncan says these are actually almost too sweet. I don't think I can put it off any longer. Got as many tomatoes off as I can. Gotta get this netting down. I was not kidding when I said I was going to put a cap on the top of my head to try and keep some of the flies off. I think I'm tall enough for this job. And then what I think I'm going to do is take it through here. Oh, there's another one I've missed. Put them down a second. I've brought this red bucket in. Let's see if I can get some of these flies to just go straight in this bucket because it's pretty grim. I'm feeling very guilty for the amount of dead flies there are in here. I feel like that's a lot lighter in here already, isn't it? 
especially for these ones in the center. So all we need to do now is remove this. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to take this piece of mesh out whilst these tomatoes are in here. So the plan I have is just to cut the ties at the top and kind of gently let it go down behind the plants and sort of just sit down there for a little bit. And if I feel like I can get it out, probably with a bit of help from Duncan to sort of guide it around the plants, then I'll do that at a later date. But for now, it's just about getting the light in. So I don't think it really matters that much. Now I did actually fasten it on around these storm braces. So I'll undo those bits first. And we'll see if we can get it sorted. That's a job well done, and that was actually a lot easier than I thought. So Far from all those worries that I had about what to do with the polytunnel, I'm just going to do that next year. Early, well, late spring, early summer, just going to put that shade netting up and know that that is going to help with the tomatoes and the heat that this tunnel generates. Now, obviously, it gets hot in here because there is no shade and that is south, that side. I purposely positioned it this way for a couple of reasons. One was that putting it on this part of the plot meant it wasn't underneath any trees, but that also means it's not in any shade. So I then decided it needed to face east to west because that is our prevailing wind. I thought that I would need this to have a through draft and it has been helping it, but it really did need that extra shade. Otherwise we were hitting sort of 50 degrees in here. If it gets that hot in here now in the second half of September, then surely that can only help to ripen these tomatoes. So another job ticked off. So if you have shade netting up, now is probably the time to take that down and I will get on and do the greenhouses next. Now, whilst we're in the polytunnel, I'm going to take a moment and cut back these melon plants. These melons were doing absolutely fine until we had those two degree temperatures the other day. And well, they didn't survive that. Clearly a bit too cold for them. Now there is one here on the plant. I don't know whether it's ripe. It's not far off ripe if it isn't ripe. So I'm going to harvest that and these are Minnesota midgets and I hope these are as joyous as the Arava melons. I'll have a look at that later, but harvest that and then take the rest of this melon out. Really sad to see them succumb so close to being finished anyway. I guess it's better than succumbing to the weather earlier on in the season. Did you have that cold weather last Friday? And if you did, did you lose any plants as well? This one is kind of clinging on to life. So until it's completely died back, I will leave these ones on because this melon here is most definitely not ripe enough yet. But I think this one is. So I've harvested another little one. How cute is that? <laughs> they have been a star for me this year. Melons. And so I have this one and I have this other one left down here again. That's not even as ripe as that one, as you can see. So I'm just hoping it can kind of cling to life enough to ripen these melons, but it's not looking good. Cucumbers are also starting to put up some very funky growth now, but there's a few that aren't doing too bad. So we're continuing to pick them. I am starting to pickle them and I want to make some cucumber relish next as well, because I don't know how many more we're going to get. So I'm going to try and prolong the harvest, but I have been wrapping them in cling film because I have been told that that does keep them fresher for longer. Is that a trick that you do with yours? I'm going to miss cucumbers. Now, similar story, this end of the polytunnel, the Arava melon has given up the ghost. To be fair, this one didn't have any more melons on it anyway, so I was just leaving it in because I was a little bit lazy. But this needs to get taken out now.
Oh, look at that. It tried to have a baby melon on it. I still haven't made the melon sorbet that I plan to make with it, but they are all in the freezer. So when I've got some time, that will be the job that is on the list. And then this one, unfortunately, as you can see, this vine has also completely died. I know this isn't going to ripen off of the vine now, but I have heard that if you let them go soft, and it has gone soft because it's been dying back for some time now, that actually they're not too bad even when they're not quite ripe in salads with some feta cheese and things because you're just missing the sweetness, but actually it will be okay to eat. So I might have to do a fact checking mission for that one to make sure that that is accurate, but could well be added to some salad. We shall see. Something that I will do now that I've just taken that melon out is use some of these ties to just support this cucumber to the paracord that was holding the other plants up. It's been quite nice to let them drape over here and if I step back and look at these cucumbers coming across to the centre, I really love that jungle look about it and I think next year that's what I'll plan to do is to run them across to this centre. Won't be growing all of these varieties next year. Will not be growing the crystal lemon. Do not like it. I will probably grow the market more again next year, but I'm thinking of growing Carmen. Although I do like the Ladiva that's at the end. So we shall see. We shall see. We have had too many cucumbers this year though. I don't need five cucumber plants. So I'll probably have less cucumbers next year and more melons in here. All in all, I've been really, really happy with how the polytunnel has performed this year. Look at the light this time of day as well. Magical. Well, look at that. I am rather delighted again with another polytunnel harvest. September is a month that keeps on giving, isn't it? But it also means that we've got to forward plan a little bit. And obviously we're only a month away from when I will be planting out my garlic. So what I have got here next to me are some of my dried garlic from this year and all I've done is pulled this up look not even cleaned them how terrible and I just stored them to dry properly and I thought that before I decide whether to buy any that I should have a look to see if these are okay and these are what I plan to plant this year I only grew two varieties last year which was province white and cork white and do you know I can't remember offhand which is which I think I only bought a clove and a half because I actually don't like garlic. Surprise, surprise, I don't like something. But what I found was that our own garlic is lovely. The, that overwhelming smell of garlic that you get in bought products is something that I don't like, but I've actually been eating our own garlic. So I want to grow more this year. Seeing as I only had one bulb of garlic last year, I wouldn't have planted that many cloves. These are obviously the white ones. And these all look okay. So I think these will be absolutely fine to plant. Yeah, they all look nice and dry. So that's a third bulb. And this one is obviously the hard neck variety. This is the first one with the pink cloves in it. So I need to remember which was the hard neck. And then I also have these ones which have split a little bit when I was harvesting them, but they've all dried nicely. So I'll pull these cloves off, they seem okay. And again, these are the pink cloves. And I have to say on a personal level, I have preferred the flavor of these. I would like to grow more of these really. Oh, they look really good specimens to have as your seed garlic although some are a little bit smaller. Wow. Obviously these are acclimatized to my growing condition. So I'm hopeful that that means these are going to give me a really good harvest for next year. Now I won't be planting it until the end of October, but it just needed to be checked because I'm going to Malvern next week. So obviously I could have bought some more garlic from there had I got a problem with my own stored garlic cloves. If you're going, I'll look forward to meeting you. I'll be there on the Sunday, the 29th, and I'll catch you in the next video. Look after yourselves.
Bye.